reason that the voter turnout was so poor this year is because there's absolutely no chance for change whatsoever. This election changes nothing. Uh, either one of these people, uh, had they been elected, in this case President Obama was elected, is going to continue a very cozy relationship with the Zionist lobby, is going to continue uh, allowing the Federal Reserve Board to proceed uh, unabated in its quest for more fiat money. It's not going to change the whole issue of the uh, usury-based economy of the United States or fractional reserve banking. The national debt will continue to grow. These insane military involvements uh, abroad will continue. This is a very dangerous period of time. And I think an increasing number of voters understand that when you look at the amount of corporate money in these campaigns, the amount of Israeli money in these campaigns, the controlled character of the American media, as well as the fact that on substantive issues there were no true differences between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. This was the reason for the low voter turnout. I think, again, it's a very dangerous period of time in terms of political instability in the United States as we move into a situation where more thinking people are expressing a great deal of concern that the country is still headed in the wrong direction and that there is going to be gridlock in the next four years between Mr. Obama and a Republican-controlled House uh, and a Senate that is marginally controlled by the Democrats but will engage no meaning, uh, meaningful policy reform either. So this is the circumstance, this is the situation, and I think a lot of people in the United States right now are feeling very anxious about the future. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, November 7th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to continue here with uh, what was just discussed. Um, just brief with brief uh, overview of the elections, not really too much. Uh, just basically how the uh, this most recent uh, puppet was uh, basically reelected. So, you know, because a lot of people think that they had something to do with it. You know, when they push the button and stuff like that. Well, it's the uh, best uh, fascist dictatorship money can buy, and we all know that. I covered it yesterday. It was uh, one of the most uh, expensive elections where contributions were given uh, in history, and the majority of them were Zionist Jews, biggest donors to presidential bids of Obama and Romney. So this should be all over the uh, Zionist-dominated media, right? Oh, the big win for the Israelis, big big win for the Zionist and the Jewish community. But you don't see that, right? Um, it says here, Zionist Jews are the biggest donors that finance the U.S. presidential election campaign of both parties. So this is the biggest one, casino tycoon uh, Mr. Adelson, an anti-Iran Zionist Jew who has so far contributed $34 million to the Republican Political Action Committee. And it goes on, it says that the wealthy Jewish donors and other financing this year's presidential election is on track to cost a whopping $2 billion dollars. In exchange for their financial support, these pro-Israeli donors can gain, gain major influence, sorry, says the report. They're often invited to state dinners at the White House and other events with the U.S. president. Then I saw this article from November 6th yesterday, three reasons why Jews could decide the 2012 election. So this is actually from Fox News. They did cover it before. Um, it goes on and it says, It was no coincidence that both candidates repeatedly pledged to protect Israel's security. Both men recognized the Jewish vote could determine the outcome of the election, but how is this possible that a constituency compromising 2% of the population could make the difference? Remember, I just said they have 13% um, representation in Congress, and they only represent 2% of the population. Someone else said they probably represent 30% when they change their names. And the amount of politicians, Christian Zionists, that are actually bought out uh, by these people, and of course the media that supports it all. But they'll give you the reason right here, flat out. First, Jews are concentrated in the states that count most in the Electoral College. The top 10 states with the largest Jewish populations account for 244 of the 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Second, Jews vote in higher proportions than any other voter group, said 96% of Jews voted in 2008. Thirdly, Jews are major contributors to political campaigns. We already went over that. So while it says which billionaires got their money's worth in the election, they should be saying which, which Zionists and which uh, global corporations and globalists, individual globalists, uh, got their money's worth, right? Because a lot of like individual companies that are considered persons donated lots of money. Well, how much did the average citizen that went out there and rocked the vote like they were told was their patriotic duty to do? How much 
did they get, uh, you know, how much was their money's worth? Well, the average voter doesn't have that much money because the government steals it from them. Um, actually, yeah, they don't have much, uh, much of a say. They just can go and vote and push the button. Um, and it's a big joke because most voters actually think that their vote counts for, you know, a popular vote when it doesn't. It uh, counts in mostly uh, what, and you look at the map, the heart of it, all the South, all of the Montanas, the Dakotas, Indiana, you know, uh, part of the Southwest were all Republican, red, conservative. And yet the guy lost. I said that last night, that that's what would happen. The majority of the country actually wants uh, uh, a Republican or a conservative or what they think is a conservative. They get, a, unfortunately, they get a neocon. And again, uh, uh, just like Obama, um, a globalist and, and a basically a Zionist supporter, a Zionist puppet. So, but either way, that's what they wanted, and they didn't get it because of Electoral College, where they go mostly in New York, in Los Angeles, the biggest cities, California, and the West Coast, which is notoriously more liberal, like Washington and Oregon, uh, and then New England, right? And then, of course, Illinois, Chicago, New York, were mostly what? Um, they're mostly uh, where, like they said, Zionists are at, uh, minorities, um, homosexuals, uh, anyone that they can um, that they can get to uh, get on the Obama uh, bandwagon, right? Because they think he's liberal and progressive. And there's just a lot of people there, right? In the rural areas, there's not as much. So I agree with that individual in the first video. Um, this uh, former U.S. Senate candidate, uh, candidate Mark Dankoff, that uh, it is this is a this is an environment uh, for something to actually pop off. I don't pr promote violence or anything like that, or uh, revolution, overthrow of government violently and stuff like that, because uh, it's just going to play into the globalist hands, and that's what they want. Uh, but it is it, we are right on track for uh, for some crazy stuff to happen because there's a lot of people that their voices just aren't being heard. Um, the whole Tea Party movement was completely smeared uh, by the media and neutralized, neutered, right? So you know. The, the dominated media here, they'll say mainstream media, Obama victory spells trouble for Natianu of Israel. Yeah, see, ooh. They go on here and act as if there's a difference and will have to contend with the strengthened second-term Democratic president of their frosty dealings with Obama because he's so liberal and progressive and friendly and he doesn't like war and stuff like that. But uh, but if you go to the Jerusalem Post, uh, it goes on and tries to make a difference. The Israeli MKs take sides on the presidential race. Uh, but it's funny, though, because it says Israel is indifferent to the outcome of the U.S. election as the Jewish state will continue to enjoy bipartisan American support, irrespective to who wins. And catch this out. Remember I was saying, uh, you know, it's your duty. you got to get out and vote and stuff like that. Uh, man dies while voting, then asks, did I vote? You know, can you just imagine that? Some guy like, oh, you know, he... He ran like 100 miles to get to the voting booth or something like that. Michigan man starts breathing while filing out his ballot. Had no heartbeat, wasn't breathing, started CPR. And a few minutes he revived and started breathing again. He knew his name and his wife's name. Um, and he just wanted to make sure did, if he voted or not because it was that important. So, yeah, um, he, someone made a crack about how he actually probably pressed the button for Romney. And uh, he got a little shock. And, uh, yeah. Chris Matthews on Obama's win. I'm so glad we had that storm last week. I am so glad. So it says, amazingly, MSNBC's Matthews about Hurricane Tuesday, oh, Sandy Tuesday night, following an announcement that Obama had been reelected. He's, it's funny. I'm just checking this out now. Just the fact, he's here's an African guy, right? He's actually half African, like half Irish and stuff like that. Uh, African-American guy from an unusual background. Yeah, he's um, he's probably not even a U.S. citizen. But, uh, yeah, so he said, I'm so glad we had the storm last week because I think the storm was one of those things, uh, no, politically, I should say, not in terms of hurting people. The storm brought in possibility for good politics. That's why he's being praised uh, by Bloomberg and stuff like that. Which kind of points towards it being a harp or weather modification-induced storm. So millions are still without power, battling freezing temperatures. will go down as the worst storms in history. Uh, but Chris Matthews thinks it's okay. So this is America in 2012. Did a women uh, help Obama win the election? So, yeah, it said the polls show women voters helped Obama win the White House. So he, I guess they helped as well, right? That's why I say it's so great with when you have someone like uh, Obama because he's not even fully black. Um, so he fools a lot of black people that will that will vote for him. Uh, and then the, then the racist issue, there's a lot of white people that, because of the Zionist-dominated media, they like to split people up and make white people feel guilty for being white. So then they'll feel like, well, I'm not a racist. I voted for a black guy or for a half-black guy. 
Um, and so they'll vote for them, and then women, of course, and then, of course, you got the, the liberal unit. So basically the white male is usually the, the last guy who's going to vote for Obama. Uh, so, But, uh, you know, I just saw a video yesterday. You know, it, it, things are changing. Whether we like it or not, it's, it's changing. It's never going to go back to that. And uh, before that, it was uh, Native Americans. So uh, this is what we're going to deal with. And they're going to exploit that to the uh, to the furthest extent. The age of Reagan is over. Barack Obama's coalition is real. Young voters, the unmarried African Americans, Hispanics, the liberal professional class, and the more than enough of the party's old blue collar base uh, to hold the Rust Belt. And uh, remember, I was talking about this. What last night says about the Tea Party? So. It goes on and says that U.S. News reports the Tea Party Patriots, one of the most prominent organizations within the fiscally conservative Tea Party movement, now, they weren't just fiscally, they were socially conservative as well, it says Mitt Romney lost the election because he was a weak, moderate candidate that uh, hand-picked by the establishment GOP. Well, they're, they're right. This is a great one. You'll like this. Conservative media blew it, how the right-wing media failed its audience. So, <laughs> I didn't know there was an actual real conservative media. I mean, if you guys know that i mean if you guys find one uh when you turn on the tv on cable let me know i might actually start watching television again uh but since 2008 i haven't um because i just started to realize that it's all the same uh, so just like mitt romney uh just like fox it's it's just bs for people to eat up and you tell them that and they don't want to hear it so you know oh you know you'll hear people like oh yeah you know uh, 9-11 and Glenn Beck, you know, Glenn Beck's awesome. You ever watch that? And I'm just shaking my head and be like, I, I don't really know what to tell them. You know, they don't want to hear it. Ben Affleck on Argo, probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents. Then from Hollywoodism to Iranophobia, Argo, in recent years, Iranophobia has come to encompass a wider scope of media, including cinema, which is incontestably capable of exercising a more powerful effect on manipulating the audience. Likewise, Argo is another dastardly attempt at fanning Iranophobia by continuing Brian Gilbert's Not Without My Daughter 1991. Says, in an idiotically crude manner, the movie attempts to describe Iranians as over-emotional, irrational, insane, and diabolical, while at the same time the CIA agents are represented as heroically patriotic. They're patriotic, right, when they invoked uh, um, basically a coup and a revolu uh, false revolution and posed their little shah there, a little puppet. So yeah, that's why maybe they were getting a little emotional there guys. Hollywood, a longtime friend of the CIA. This is actually from New York or Los Angeles Times. High-level access granted to filmmakers researching a movie about the CIA asset bin Laden uh, raid that never really took place. It's just the latest episode, an increasingly close cooperative arrangement that has spanned administrations and regimes. The CIA owns the media and Jews or Zionists own the CIA. This is the quote um, that uh, Probably uh, he was coming. Off, he was going off of Ben Affleck. That is William Kobe. Of course, in the forums, are saying that he never said that. That that doesn't exist. Well, if we all know it's true. There's enough different quotes, and and just you open your damn eyes and you can see it. The Central Intelligence Agency owns everyone of any significance in the major media. Okay, so that doesn't exist. He never said it. You could get a journalist cheaper than a good call girl for a couple hundred dollars a month. The CIA operative discussing the availability and prices of journalists willing to peddle CIA propaganda and cover stories, Catherine the Great by Deborah Davis. There is quite an incredible spread of relationships. You don't need to manipulate Time Magazine, for example, because there are CIA people at the management level, says William Bader, former CIA intelligence officer, briefing members on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Then we have the agency's relationship with the New York Times was by far its most valuable among newspapers, according to the CIA officials. It was General Times' policy to provide assistance to the agency whenever possible. The CIA and the media by Carl Bernstein. So, yeah, I mean, you'll see people in forums and stuff like that debunked. It's been debunked, right? That isn't true. That was back in the 50s. They don't do it anymore. Well, just like CIA agents, they never really leave, right? So you can just put it that way. Or look at it that way as far as the media goes and um, the Pentagon, the clandestine, and the agencies uh, basically influencing media. They never really went away. They probably just uh, got better at it. The big Hollywood lie denying that Jews control the film business, of course. Holly Parton is a big example when she said everyone's afraid to touch anything that's religious because most of the people out here in Hollywood are Jewish and it's a frightening thing for them to promote Christianity. But they invoked the anti-Semitic uh, card, and Dolly Parton apologized. An author slams Norway as the most anti-Semitic country. 
In return, the diplomat lashes out at Israel. Same thing in Sweden. Remember Sweden? Over not supporting Iran uh, sanctions, Sweden responded by saying they must have got that from their fairy tale factory. So they're starting to piss other countries off.